The Event Tech Podcast is brought to you by Event Hero. All of the event management software features in the world are worthless if they don't easily integrate with your registration system and other systems you need to make your event happen the way you want it to. Stop making superhuman effort and start using your superpowers. Event Hero provides features you need, like check-ins, lead retrieval, analytics, and alerts, all seamlessly integrated with your favorite registration system and other back-end tools. To learn more and to get started, visit eventhero.io. Welcome to the Event Tech Podcast. I'm John Federico, your host and executive producer, which, as you know, means that I'm the guy who turns the knobs and posts the shows. Uh, but I'm also the guy who finds the great guests. And this week, uh, we have a great guest coming to us from New York City. I'll introduce him in just a moment. But before we get there, a little housekeeping. So let's see, you might be listening to us on the subway, in your car, on a pair of headphones somehow. That means you probably found us on iTunes. We love that. Thank you. Uh, when you get to your destination or you're finished mowing the lawn or whatever you're doing right now, uh, you know, we'd appreciate a review, maybe some stars. We like five stars. Five is good. Uh, head on over to iTunes and Google Play these days. You can find us in Google Play as well. Uh, and we'd love uh, to earn uh, your stars. And if you can't give us five stars, send me an email. I'm John at eventhero.io, and let me know what I could have done better uh, to earn your five stars. Uh, of course, you can just feel free to reach out anyway. Uh, if you have any ideas for guests on the show, uh, topics you want me to cover, drop me an email. Again, it's john at eventhero.io. Now, if you are watching me give you the thumbs up on screen, uh, that means you might, be, you might have found us on YouTube, uh, or you, maybe you're watching us on our blog. Uh, that's great. Uh, you know, jump into the comments, not on YouTube. I know it's off over there. People are nuts. Uh, but uh, leave the comment on our blog. That'd be great. Of course, you know, send me email, send us email. Uh, we'd love to get you involved in the conversation. All right. That's it for the housekeeping. Uh, joining me today is uh, Alan Alroy. Alan is the CMO and co-founder of Bizabo. Not the Bizabo you used to know, but the new Bizabo. Uh, Alan's going to tell us all about uh, where the company, how the company started, and what they do now, and, and where they're headed. Alan, uh, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. I've been trying to schedule that for a long time. A long time, and it's always like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Alan's like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to be on the show. Great, great. We'll get in touch, and then like, it just never <laughs> happens. So it took it took a long time to make this happen, but uh, we're glad glad to have you on. So, Alan. Tell us about Visibo. Now, I, I, was, I was sort of being a little cheeky there because it started out as one thing and has grown into so much more. So what's the Visibo story? Tell people, you know, what, what do they need to know about Visibo? Maybe they've heard of it before and they thought of you and they think, think of you as this one thing, but in reality, you're this much bigger thing now. I hope they heard about it before. Um, <laughs> the Visibo story started probably four and a half years ago. Um, we started as an event networking app, one of the first pioneers of the event app business. And with time, the first two years, uh, we saw a lot of success. We saw the people love the product. Um, we were used by thousands of events from around the world, won a lot of awards and prizes. But after two years that um, I've personally and, and my team, we talked with thousands of event planners. We saw that something was missing. We were passionate on solving something that is even bigger. We saw on one hand that the networking and the whole event app um, world is, um, is very growing. The need is obviously there. That said, we saw that in a way, it's something that is becoming a nice to have and not a must have. What do I mean by that? You can run a successful event <clears throat> You can run an event in general without an event app. And it was a, uh, it felt to us that we want to be more tied into the event planners and provide even more value to make it from a nice to have into a must have. Um, after talking with again, 
so many different planners, we saw that the opportunity is much bigger than what we thought at the beginning. We saw that there are so many processes that are still manual, that existing solutions um, are not there yet in terms of the potential we have in our, in our vision. And we set ourselves a new, a new target and a new journey um, that was in February 2015. After working on it for working on it for a long time, we launched what we call the all-in-one event success platform. So today, this is what we are. We're an event success platform. It's a, in a way the new generation of an event management software that helps you run more successful events. All right. Well, I want to know what the, I definitely want to hear all about that. So event success platform. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a loaded description, Alan, because everyone has a different definition of success, first of all. Right. Um, but, but obviously you have a specific uh, user in mind and a spe and specific goal. So, so tell me, first of all, you know what, before we even get there, what's a networking app? I, I, I know this sounds, you and I know what this is, but not everybody listening may know what that means. What does that mean? What's a networking app? That's what you were, and, and you still do, of course, correct? Uh, it's still part of our value proposition, yeah. E excellent. So, so what is that? Let's start there. It's a tool, a platform, whether it's on mobile or the web, by the way, um, that helps your audience to connect with one another, to increase engagement, and make sure that um, they meet the right people that they came to meet, that they discover all kinds of hidden opportunities within the audience. So we help them not only to discover, but also to connect with, with the right people by one-on-one -on -one messaging, by um, a matching algorithm, um, by making it cross-device and cross-platform. Got it. So you help connect folks, like-minded people, or people who are looking, who might, who, people who might have needs and people who have skills, let's say, for argument's sake, and you help them connect at an event. Correct. Okay. So that's what you guys did and still do, but now you've layered on this entire all-in-one uh, event success platform. So now what is, now what, what does that do? Let's, let's put the networking app aside. We know, we know it does come into play. Um, so, so what is this platform and, and, and what does it do? How does it work? Who's your primary audience or customer base? Yep. Um, that's a good question. And I'll relate to something you said before that everyone defines success differently. Um, spot on we 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 sell now to um i would say like seven types of uh, organizations from um agencies to corporates to um associations to publishers to uh, nonprofits and these organizations run the, the events that we're helping them with are events from 100 to 3,000 attendees on average, usually organizations who run, who run several events per year, and events is a, something that is a meaningful for them, and they're looking for a platform to help them streamline their events, the whole event planning process, and not only that, they're looking for a platform to help them measure the ROI from their events. So it's all about their definition of success, not our definition of what would be successful for them. Um, it's something that um, took us uh, several years to understand that it's all, about, it's all about their success. And the event success platform means that we need to help you identify what should be defined as success to help this industry uh, be more data-driven with specific and smart goals and then help you with a set of features and tools to help you achieve those goals, your goals, not our goals. <laughs> okay, good. I think you, you've definitely made that point. You've driven that point home, right? That their, their success. So, so let's, let's talk about it from a tactical uh, perspective. Um, uh, I've got, I'm right. I'm on your homepage here. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there's a section here called what we do. Um, and, and I would say this is a very sort of tactical uh, you know, look at, at features just overall. Uh, so, so let's, let's take a, let's zoom in a bit, right? We know it's all about success. It's about discovering what success means for you. It's about helping you achieve that. Now let's get tactical. How do you guys do that? Sure. So the, the platform itself and, and its components, it starts from helping you to, to increase brand awareness and making sure that you look good um, using our event website builder. So this is where you start your journey with us. 
you use Bizabo to build your event website. And if you have your own event website, you can use our widgets to, to embed that into your own website. Then it goes through the whole registration and ticketing process, whether you, um, you're managing RSVPs or are selling tickets. Um, throughout the whole event communication and event promotion to the on-site and event experience with our event app and networking tools and real-time polling, um, real-time messaging, and so on, to then the post-event and between the events where we help you with promoting the next one and analyzing the results and the insights from the, the first event. Now, these are, you're right, these are the features. And we try to match each and every one of the features to, to a specific goal. So for example, if uh, when we help you to build, to build a website, and we're not, really, we're not building it for you, it's the platform is itself is self-served and you don't need us to, to operate it. Um, you can actually have and define goals within the platform and we constantly help you measure and reflect your success against those goals. So whether those goals are around sales or around number of registrations, you constantly see where you are against those, where you're supposed to be now. Um, are you ahead? Are you behind? And then using our customer success team, we are helping you to, um, to innovate and come up with tactics on how to use those tools, whether the, the email marketing tools, the engagement tools, in order to achieve it. That's how we tie the features to to the event success. And I'll give you an example of um, many, many of our customers define success as having the, having the full house. Right. When we now sit to design a feature, we're trying to think, okay, how can we, how can we help with that? There is a big difference. And throughout the years, I, I'm sure that you saw many event tech companies that are in this constant chase about the feature, uh, which <laughs> yes. is, Always, always a struggle, of course. Um, we now really work hard to tie those features into real, real value and the real need um, and to make sure we're looking at, at the full cycle of the feature. What, what is it supposed to do at the end? Um, regarding the full house, so like two features that I'll give just a, as examples. One of them we call hot, hot leads. Um, people are starting to register for your event, like in most big e-commerce websites. You know that example when uh, you're, you're looking at a shoe on Amazon and then that <laughs> shoe is chasing you all around the internet? Uh, yeah. Because oftentimes people are starting the purchasing journey and for all kinds of reasons are not completing it. Same thing with events. Um, there are many, many people who start to register to your event, but the process is stuck in the middle, whether because of the price or because someone called them for dinner. Um, we now give you a smart automated list of everyone who started the registration process and have not completed it. And then are helping you with automated campaigns on how to bring them back home. Um, another feature is something we call Ticket Boost, which is a double-sided referral model. We looked at how companies like Airbnb, Uber, Dropbox, how they incentivize people to become their advocates. And we saw that it's all about uh, it's not only about helping your friends, it's also about what you're getting in return. Um, and we saw that most people who um, shared an Uber code, an Uber promo code at the beginning, or a Dropbox link, it was not only about helping them because they wanted the free ride as well. They wanted to get that extra storage. Um, so that feature helps people who sell tickets to, after they bought a ticket, they can now share sort of like a referral code with, uh, with my friends. And if they purchase, I get a refund and they get a discount. And the planners have full ownership and control over what type of discount, is it a fixed, is it a percentage, and on the amount. And these are, the I think, the features which make us special and different. It's not just having a ticketing platform. It's having a ticketing platform that actually helps you hit your goals. There are just two examples of our, those small features uh, across the entire platform that helps you um, um, be become successful. And I know it's a, it's a big word when we work with our customers, we try to be very, very specific and very, very tactical to, to not leave it something vague 
Um, and we say, by the way, in terms of the industry, that's like a, an interesting conversation, I think. The majority of event planners do not really define goals when they start the event planning process. Don't, yep. Don't, don't get me started on that. That's, we could, we could lament over that. Uh, I, yeah. And I think a lot of it is, it depends on who they are and, and, and the organizations they represent. Uh, you know, if it's, some people could define success as filling a room and selling a lot of tickets and sponsorships and they're done, right? Your classic conference or festival model. And that's the end of it. Um, but there's so many other reasons for producing an event. Uh, it could be for sales or, or lead generation or customer appreciation or, uh, you know, hundreds of other things. And, um, but, but a lot of people still have that mindset. It's like, no, I'm just going to fill the room and I'm going to make a great experience. But there's not, they don't, that, that's all they measure, right? Is are the seats filled? Uh, and, and, uh, and did people enjoy, uh, dinner and, and conversation, uh, to use a simple example. Um, so I agree with you. Yeah. It, it's getting people to focus on that is very important. So how do you do that? How do you get them to focus on, on their goal on, on goals they should be looking at, uh, at achieving? First of all, we talk about it. Um, Sometimes you, you don't need technology, you don't need anything. You need to pick up the phone um, and speak with your customers and really have a conversation about, let's think, to, I, I know you, you didn't think about it in advance sometimes, but let's think together on, let's imagine like the three days after the event or your entire event strategy throughout the year, what will make them successful? What will you be happy about? Is it about providing value to sponsors? Is it about increasing the attendee satisfaction over time? Um, is it about just creating an amazing experience that they will tell their friends about? What is it exactly? And then we're articulating that together and trying to uh, design for them like a journey with our features and with our tools on how to make it happen. And it's not, not an easy process, that's for sure. No, it never is. Um, people, so it, it is funny because uh, unless you've actually produced an event, people just think it's like, oh, you just get a space and send out invitations and it's easy. And it's like, no, 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 no. Uh, my favorite, uh, actually one of my favorite uh, sort of t-shirts that I've seen recently, uh, our, our friend uh, um, Liz King actually has a t-shirt, which I think is hilarious. It says, uh, what does it say? Uh, planning an event is just like riding a bike, except the bike's on fire and you're on fire and everything's on fire. And I was like, yeah, that's about yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. that. That was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I want one. Um, I definitely want one. So, um, uh, yeah, so let, let's... It, it, so the, I'm almost looking at this too as, as maybe I was even getting too, too granular. You guys have, if you break it down, event success is your ultimate goal, but you have event management, event marketing, and event experience. And, and you've touched on a lot of those. For instance, you've obviously touched on the event marketing and the whole referral program. That's, that's one example. Um, it sounds like, though, what you guys do is very, it's software, but it's also very consultative. Uh, it's becoming more consultative as well. You're right. It's a, it's a mix. Now we have a, we have a customer success team that we're investing a lot of money in. Um, it's a mix of uh, ex-event planners and people that are, uh, in a way, um, SaaS success experts. They are, in a way, consultants, and they know how to onboard you as a customer to work with you and focus on you and not on us. Um, because we know that in the long run, if you're successful, we're going to be successful. Um, and yeah, we've, we've gone through um, from being like a whole self-service platform that we as a Founders, we used to look at the website and the analytics and, oh, look, someone signed up. Oh, he left. Um, <laughs> to now um, having like a, an approach that is a little bit more high touch. Um, we're definitely not in the, in looking at the spectrum of low touch versus high touch. So we're not building, we don't have a professional services team in which we're, we're going to build things for you. It's, it's not scalable compared to, to who and what we are today. And that this allows us to, to sell to people from all around the world. So it is con um, a mix of technology and having great people to talk with and to walk you through. Uh, we know that, you know, there is the recent uh, study about the fact that event planners is the fifth most stressful job in the world. Yeah, yep. And it continues to be. Yes. Which means that uh, if you have one of the most stressful jobs in the world, sometimes you need to speak with someone on the other side. 
So to have a good customer service is just something that uh, is inevitable. People ask me, so on the long run, would you want to automate everything and make it a, a fully self-serve platform? And the answer is no. I, I think it's very important um, and it's a great selling point that we have a team that you can call that will help you um, that a day before the event or on the day of the event, you need to be able to call someone. It's something that uh, as when we started, it's not something we thought about. I, I have to admit, we, um, early on, we were the same way. We thought we were going to build something that was completely self-service. Uh, and, uh, you know, over the past, we're, we're also in a business about the same, period, same amount of time. And, um, you know, it's very different now. Uh, we, we start you off with everything done happens with nothing happens without a sales demo. It's rare that someone just comes in, signs up and, and goes, it goes to work. Uh, that's the first thing. And same thing. We have training. We, every new account gets, you know, has training for them and, and all and their entire staff. Um, yeah. and it makes, it makes all the difference, all the difference, because there are things you learn uh, on the, through those interactions, uh, that help not only help you serve that client, but help you serve all your clients because you, you learn so much from it. So I think, I think, uh, yeah, kind of looking at the continuum of, of, you know, uh, low touch to high touch being somewhere in the middle for, for businesses like yours and even businesses like ours. I think, I think it's the way to be, um, yep. whether we like it or not. <laughs> All right. So we touched a bit on event marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, the basics, right? The, the websites, the ticketing, et cetera. Um, uh, we, you know, using email, the referral marketing, that sort of thing. But you have this concept of, of all in one, right? And I, I noticed that but that's, for, that's a phrase you've used from the, from the day you launched it, the all in one platform. Why was that so important to you? But more importantly, why do you think it was so important to your customers to uh, build it and present it in that way? Is that, it, are, are people looking, really looking for a one stop shop these days or they're looking for a, um, uh, you know, a, a most, <laughs> Maybe not everything, but most things in a single package. I mean, what was the impetus behind that? Um, that's, that's a good question. And um, you are right that no platform, and, and I don't think I'm shooting myself in the leg here, no platform is a real all-in-one platform, right? Because you, you have all kinds of needs, and um, you cannot have a platform that does everything. When we say all in one, we're looking at, at, at the core building blocks of, of an event, right? To something that can help you throughout the entire life cycle. And it was important for us and to offer that because we saw when we looked and, and interviewed many, many customers, we saw that the smallest event organizers sometimes use five to eight different technologies to run their event. Right. And they don't have the budgets and they don't have the manpower. So I'm not looking about, I'm not talking about the 20 people um, event planning teams. I'm talking about a small, a small team who runs like a, two conferences per year. They need to use a MailChimp for email marketing, Eventbrite for ticketing, WordPress, another vendor for an event app, another for a poll or a survey. And what happens is it doesn't look consistent. So the experience for the attendees is, is lacking. Um, and their brand is obviously lo looks very different than one another. The whole experience is the registration experience looks like that. The email marketing looks like that. Um, it's very difficult to make sure it, it will look good. And then to try and figure out, okay, did, did it work? You need to be sort of an Excel genius because not all of the platforms are integrated to one another. You know right. that, you know that more than me. Um, so you need to look at five different sets of analytics, if there are analytics. And then it just does not happen because you don't have the manpower to do that. You don't have the, the knowledge on how to do that analysis. Um, so it's broken. So for us, it's looking at all of those building blocks and coming up with a solution that because it's together, it's much more powerful. Because it's integrated, you have the knowledge and knowledge is power. So we empower you to take decisions based on that. And it's true. We're very, very open for integrations and as time passes by, we understand more and more that it's inevitable. We're not trying to be the best, by the way, at email marketing or to be the best at ticketing or to be the best at building websites. WordPress are going to be the best in that. MailChimp are going to be the best in that. 
will be the best in connecting everything together and provide, providing you an experience in which one plus one plus one equals 10. And the, the goal behind it is that that 10 will be so valuable to you that you will be okay with not using MailChimp for email marketing um, and using something because you know that again, the, 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 um, the outcome of all of that combined is just so high. So it will be much, much uh, worthwhile to not work with siloed solutions, whether it's by an, the same tool or by integrations that we're going to have in place. But the all-in-one experience that everything is talking to one another. And some companies that we're looking at that helped us to, uh, to understand the value of all-in-one or um, HubSpot, Marketo, um, Zenefit. So across different industries, we see that consolidation of tools. And some of them are by, with integrations and some of them by just providing more and more value into their own tool. It's interesting you use those specific companies as examples because I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, when, when, they, uh, when they began, uh, many of them, they, most, they would augment their features through integrations, and that was their big selling point. But over time, they, they had done similar things, right? They, had, they saw where people were performing integrations and saying, yeah, but it's, it's, it's lightweight. It doesn't, it doesn't offer uh, an, enough uh, uh, data or responsiveness. So we'll, we're going to build, we should, we should improve upon that in our own product. And over time, that's, that's what they've done. Even now, for instance, HubSpot um, used to be all about inbound marketing and they used to connect to Salesforce and all of that. But now they have their own CRM system, which is, is totally integrated to the HubSpot system. So, yeah. you know, it, it, your example is, is your examples are, are good ones, de definitely, to say the least. It's interesting, by the way, that HubSpot, um, they, they launched their sales CRM, but at the same time, they signed a three-year agreement with Salesforce to extend their partnership and, and the integration. Because, and I think it's, it's a great indication of, of them thinking about the customers and not only about themselves. Well, obviously, it, it, it tied into one another, but um, I, I thought that it's an interesting uh, partnership in which like that Salesforce, obviously, they knew that HubSpot is developing a CRM, but they wanted to extend the partnership as well. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. It's, it's, what you, it's about what your customers want. You know, we don't use Salesforce here. It's too complex for our needs. Um, but we have plenty of customers that use Salesforce. And, um, you know, finally, after all this time, we'll, we'll soon have a Salesforce integration uh, because, you know, it, it's, it, our customers want it that they don't want to jump through hoops to be, have to work with us and they like to work with us and they like to work with Salesforce. So we're just going to make it easier. And, and yeah, that, that, it's really all about the customers. Yep. Because believe me, my team did not want to build <laughs> the Salesforce integration, but we're doing it. We're doing it. I believe you. We, we, we released our own Salesforce integration two months ago. So I definitely believe that your developers do not want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Uh, yeah. All right. So, so that's, that's your, your concept of all in one. It's, I'm going to make up a phrase. I'm just going to say it's, it's 80 or 85% of use cases, right? So it's like the core components that someone needs. And then the edge cases, you know, that 20, the 15 to 20% that's left, then you might perform an integration or someone might just use another piece of technology to make that happen, what have you. But your goal is to, is to cover most use cases. And that's, that's your definition of all in one. Spot on. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because it is funny. There are so many companies out there that say, hey, we're all in one. We do that. And it's like, well, you, you do do that, but it's not very good. And, and really, why, it's like, you know, they try to be everything to all people just to close deals. And, and I think they're doing themselves and their customers a disservice sometimes. So I, I like that 80% perspective, right? Get, get, be really good at that, that and then layer on the other stuff as you go. Exactly. So you've got, um, so, Let's just talk a bit now about the um, about what it's like to work with Bizivo. So we you know, we were joking before about how about how on the low touch high touch scale it's somewhere in the middle. Well, you know I don't see anything here about pricing. Uh, all I see is a button that says request a demo and contact us. So so it's definitely not self service. So how do we get started? I, I decide I, I want to work with Bizivo. Um, Forget about, let's say you've already given me the demo. I'm, I'm all set with that. Okay, I'm convinced. Now, how do we get started? What, what do we do? How do we start working together? Um, well, first, those who want to get in touch, um, click on the request demo page on the website, then we, we call you. Like we actually 
a phone, about a real phone call? A real phone call. Oh um, we call you, we'll learn more about your, your events and your needs. It's very important for us to make sure that there is a fit between what we offer to what you need. I, I totally agree. When people request a demo of our software, my first response is, hey, can we have a conversation first and then I'll see if the demo is, is right? Because if there's no fit, why waste your time in, in ours? Uh, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I mean, and this is not, by the way, to, to toot my own horn, but it's just so nice to hear that because so many people are like, you want a demo? Sure. Let's do a demo. Meanwhile, you haven't established that there's a need. So anyway, continue. Yeah. Because Events are so different than one another. Exactly. That's why, by the way, we, we, we remove pricing from our website because pricing is tied to value. And we, by now, we already know that the value we can provide to one event can be different than the value we provide to another customer. And now the, the pricing is tied to that. So we, if we had a way to make the pricing very transparent on the website, we would do that. The reason we do not do it is because the set of customers we have now are so different and their needs are so different. So it's true. They use the same platform, but in many, many different ways. So um, we, we, we are giving quotes these days um, based on all kinds of parameters from number of events and number of attendees and the, sets, the set of features that uh, you want to use, the integrations and, and so on. So you're gonna get, you're gonna request a demo. We're gonna call you. We're gonna have a quick conversation. If you, if you would, if you would see that a demo might be um, needed, we're gonna make a demo. Probably that whole thing would not be more than an hour. Both of those conversations. We're gonna give you a quote, and usually, with usually within, depends on you, of course, but within a day to sometimes two weeks, um, we're gonna sign a sign a contract, like an annual contract. We're not doing a one-offs for um, just a, a per event. We've, we've gone through that because we know that we can offer you more value over time. So it's a subscription business. Um, and again, most of our customers now have more than three to five events per year. And uh, that's it. After you, uh, after, uh, after you pay and sign, we set you up with a dedicated customer success manager um, who will be with you throughout your life cycle with Visible, which hopefully is several years. So that person then, so then what happens? I'm introduced to my customer success, success manager and you send me login credentials, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, and then I can get to work with the help of my, uh, uh, my manager. Yeah, the, the, the platform is very, very, very user intuitive. So you can already get up and running. You don't need to wait for, for anything. We don't need to build you. We don't need to integrate. We don't need to do anything. You can go and add your events and, and design everything. And we're going to schedule a call to talk about your event strategy and to talk about the goals, which I mentioned earlier, um, to, and to share all kinds of best practices and tips that uh, we can share based on the knowledge from how other customers are using it. So it's interesting. It sounds... It's again back to the consultative nature of the business. Um, it's people aren't just getting software from from you guys, and that's I think I think it's an important distinction. Uh, you know, you're not just uh, you know signing up for uh, you know a, any old system that's a, you know where you put your credit card in and get to work. Uh, you know, there, there's a, there's there's more knowledge to be there. You're doing it's what I, what sounds like to me as much knowledge sharing as you are uh, provision of software. It's true. And you can see that on our, on our blog that we are all about sharing knowledge and driving innovation um, within the industry. We recently launched um, a Facebook group called Eventovation. It has like a thousand people by now, I think, and it's all about driving innovation within events and sharing knowledge. And the engagement level is very, very high. Um, and also in terms of content, we, we write a lot of content. There are a lot of people who are asking to write on our blog because it's part of uh, the consultative nature that we talked about to educate on how to use technology, what are the trends, what are the best cases. It's part of taking the industry to the next step. And we are honestly very, very excited to, to be part of it because the opportunity that all of us, like that entire industry, um, it has not yet been disrupted, but I think we're starting to see that now. 
Well, I, and I can vouch for the content. Um, I subscribe to the RSS feed of, of your blog. Um, it's, it's a regular read for me. Uh, and so for those of you who don't know, and I have to say it's been a busy week and I've got, you know, let's, uh, I've got stuff I haven't even had a chance to look at yet. There's got to be four or five posts uh, from Visible alone uh, just this week. So uh, kudos to you. Uh, and I'm waiting for my invitation to that Facebook group, by the way. Um, so... <laughs> so well done. Actually, that's a good question. So who's in that Facebook group? Do you have customers in there? Do you have, I mean, is it, is, it, is it customers, prospects, and your team? What do you do with, what do you do there? I mean, back to the constitutive nature uh, and using Facebook as, a, as an educational tool, what goes on there? Um, we, we started the renovation, by the way, as a, we see it as sort of a movement of, of um, having sort of a physical and a virtual place. And I'll get back to why I say physical. To, to have a place where event planners can share knowledge um, and exchange ideas and consult with one another. So it's comprised of uh, everyone there who is an event planner. Um, it's sales-free. We're not selling our, our, our stuff in there. And if we identify another vendor um, that is trying to sell their services, we are trying to remove it um, and explain to them why it's important important for us to keep that group as neutral as possible, although we are behind it. We're not, we're not trying to, to hide it. Um, and we see that there wasn't a real, like the level of engagement that we see is so high because uh, although there, there are all kinds of LinkedIn, of LinkedIn groups, um, people are sending us emails about how they enjoy the group because they don't have any other way to, to really get advice from their peers on how to find a supplier in New York to do this and that, or who used, um, who used a photographer in Atlanta that recommend for the upcoming event on what is the open rate that you guys see for like an email blast. Very, very cool. That's, that, is, that is great. And you're right about the LinkedIn groups. There are just so many of them. Um, and it's mostly people trying to sell stuff. It's really... Um, yeah. So, so that's, uh, yeah, I'll say that the good for you. I, I, I'm, I'm a member of a few Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups that are very well moderated. Uh, but it's a lot of work. They, these people spend a lot. Is, no, my marketing team is investing a lot of time in, in moderating it and making sure that, uh, we, we show very top quality in there. Excellent. So uh, I'll, I'll take a look for that. Uh, so, so, I'm just make, I like to keep. I like to make sure we stick with our uh, our schedule here because uh, I like to keep this the length of a typical commute. Uh, and I also know I only had you, have you scheduled for another ten minutes. I want to make sure that that we make the make the most of our time. So, if you is there anything I, I failed to to probe on uh, during our conversation that you wanted my audience to know about the success, the success platform, the event success platform, and and why why it was built and 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 described in, in, in such a way? I think in general, we are in a very uh, interesting times with uh, everything that is going on in our ecosystem, with uh, CVent getting acquired, with in general, a lot, of, uh, a lot of funding is getting into event technology. Um, when we started, when you started as well, a couple of years back, when you talked with investors about event technology, they're like, oh, uh, I'm not sure if it's a big industry, if it's a big market. Yeah. I'm not sure, etc. Time has changed. Uh, time has changed. And I think all of us helped each other to, to build this industry. The, the, even the fact that Cvent was just acquired by $1.7 billion, it's a great sign for the industry that it's possible to build giant companies um, that are very, very successful. And I think now there is a, a lot of room for the new generation of, of companies that are a mix of all kinds of trends which have developed in the last couple of years and are, and are um, still being developed from local, mobile, social, to being data-driven, to marketing, automation, um, to take it from analytics to insights. Um, and, and very, very, very exciting times for, for all of us. And I think... In my mind, in a way, like event management software is, is, is an old term. That's why I'm, I personally really like the event success. I think it's like, in a way, a phrase of, of the new generation. Uh, event management software like started in, in 2000. And now we see not only us, like there are many other places as well that are 
they're already part of a new generation of, of tools that are using all kinds of other technologies and all kinds of trends to, to make a real impact on the lives of event planners and how they run events and how they go about measuring their ROI, not only for them, for their sponsors and for their attendees. There are many amazing tools now for, for attendee engagement, for audience engagement. And I think now we're at the, at the midst of, in a way, an event tech revolution. That only only now the time and and technology is as um, at the right at the right uh, it's it's the right timing to make it happen. Everyone is ready for it. Uh, that's that's actually a uh, you know it sounds it sounds like a grand statement, uh, but I, I think it's accurate. Uh, I I think it, because it's just the we're we're moving beyond just putting people in a room. And, uh, and, and seeing what happens, you know, things are getting much more uh, sophisticated and uh, technology can only, can only help that. Um, uh, yeah, I agree. Sometimes there are, there are, and yeah, I know you, I could tell you, I know you agree with me on this. There's some event technologies that are interesting and, and not all that useful. Um, and, uh, sure. but I, I think we've reached a point now where, uh, people are starting to see the value the planners are seeing the value of what these things can add to their overall, uh, the overall, not just the management of the event, but the experience that the attendees have, as well as you know measuring the success. So uh, there's that word again, uh, measuring measuring the success. Excellent. Well, Alan, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, and if my audience wants to reach out and thank you, how can they do it? Uh, are there, are you on the Twitters and the Facebooks? Uh, how can they reach you? Uh, on Twitter, I'm Alon Alroy. Uh, Bizabo's Twitter is just at Bizabo. Uh, my personal email is alon at Bizabo.com. And in order to, to try the platform, it's Bizabo.com. Click on that button called Get Started. And I invite you to both join the Eventovation Facebook group and to check out our blog in general. It has a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of useful content. That's great. Thank you. Yes, that's blog.bizabo.com. And uh, the Facebook group is Eventivation. Uh, I'll put both of those in the show notes so that uh, people can easily find them. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Alan. And thank you, everyone, for, for joining us today. Uh, once again, um, uh, you know, tell your friends. Uh, you know, we appreciate you getting the word out about the show. It helps us achieve our mission of uh, helping to educate planners on uh, the best use of technology uh, to, for their events, uh, as well as any you know, new technologies that, that may be on the market that they haven't yet discovered. So until next time, this is John Federico for the Event Tech Podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>